a function is increasing if it's going uphill. And think about a function that's going uphill. The function must have a slope that's positive. So we can relate a function being increasing to its derivative. A function is increasing if its derivative is always positive. And we can even talk about subintervals of a function. So we could say a function is increasing over an interval if the derivative is always positive on that interval. Similarly, a function is decreasing on any interval for which its derivative is negative. So on your notes paper, it says f prime of, if f prime of x is greater than 0 on the interval a to b, then f of x is increasing on a to b. Similarly, if f prime of x is less than 0 on the interval a to b, then f of x is decreasing on a to b. And a definition that comes up sometimes, a function is monotonic if it always either increases or always decreases. So for example, the function y equals x cubed, think about what that looks like. It starts here, sort of flattens out in the middle near x equals 0, and then goes uphill again. So y equals x cubed never decreases. It only ever increases. It's flat for like a split second here at x equals 0, but it's always increasing. We would say y equals x cubed is monotonic increasing. So here's our first example. Find all the values of x for which y equals x squared is increasing, and then we'll figure out all the values for which y equals x squared is decreasing. So the way to do this is to think about what we just said. A function is increasing anywhere its derivative is positive. So to answer part A, I'm going to take the derivative dy dx is 2x. And I'm going to solve the inequality dy dx is greater than 0, which means the same thing as dy dx is positive. So I am write my inequality dy dx is greater than 0. In this case, the derivative is 2x, so 2x is greater than 0. I'm going to solve that inequality by isolating x, and I get x is greater than 0. So my conclusion, and this is what you have to watch out for because you'll be asked to justify your answer on the AP test. I would say f of x is increasing on the interval 0 to infinity because f prime of x is positive. So f prime of x is greater than 0 on that interval. Well, similarly, I could solve this well, a similar inequality to find where f of x is going to be decreasing. So I'm going to take that derivative. I want this time the derivative to be negative, so I'm going to solve the inequality dy dx is less than 0. So if 2x is less than 0, then x must be less than 0, and I can write my conclusion. f of x must be decreasing on the interval negative infinity to 0, because f prime of x is less than 0 on that interval. Or I could have said, because f prime of x is negative on that interval. Here's a similar problem. I'd like to find the values of x for which this function, y equals x cubed plus 3x squared minus 45x, is increasing. And then I'll find all the domain values for which the function is decreasing. So to find out where a function is increasing, I need to know where its derivative is positive. So that's this inequality that I've written here. I want the derivative to be bigger than 0, the derivative to be positive. So my first step is to find dy dx. So dy dx in this case, 3x squared plus 6x minus 45. And now maybe you can start to see why we spent time practicing solving quadratic inequalities. I want to solve this inequality, 3x squared plus 6x minus 45 is greater than 0. Well, to do that, anytime I have a degree greater than 1, so the degree of the derivative in the first example we did was 1, y equals 2x. I can solve y is less than, or 2x is less than 0 without using factoring. But here I'm going to have to factor. So 3x squared plus 6x minus 45 is greater than 0. I need to mark the zeros on the number line. So I'm going to factor. There's a common factor of 3, so I bring that out to the front. Here, I have three things are multiplied together to equal 0. So one of them must be 0. 3 never equals 0. x minus 3 equals 0 when x equals 3. And x plus 5 equals 0 when x equals negative 5. So the two zeros that I'm going to mark on my number line are negative 5 
and three. Then I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna test a point from each interval. So if I pick a number that's less than negative five, watch what happens here. Let's say for example, I choose to test x equals negative six. I'm gonna have three times, I'm gonna have three times negative six minus three. I know it's gonna be negative. Negative six plus five is also gonna be negative. So I'm gonna have three times a negative times a negative, which is gonna give me a positive result. Next number I might test is, I might test x equals zero. I'm gonna have three times zero minus three is negative. Zero plus five is positive. So three times a negative times a positive is gonna give me a negative result. If I test x equals, I don't know, four, I'm gonna have three times four minus three is positive. Four plus five is positive. I'll have three times a positive times a positive. The result will be positive. So now the question is, where is f decreasing? Well, f is decreasing any place f prime which is what I was marking on this number line. Anytime f prime is positive. So my conclusion, y is increasing on two intervals. So from negative infinity to negative five and from three to positive infinity because f prime of x is greater than zero because f prime of x is positive on that interval. So when I'm asked to answer question B, my answer is gonna be similar. I've already performed the sign analysis, that's S-I-G-N, analysis. My answer is gonna be that Y is decreasing any place F prime is negative, which in this case is, Y is decreasing on that's negative five to three because f prime of x is negative on that interval.